Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Love Tuts, and today I'm going to be talking about CSS gradients, and in particular, uh, linear gradients. So linear gradients are going to be supported in IE10. They're also supported in Firefox version 3.6 and up using the Moz prefix, Chrome 4.0 up using the WebKit prefix, and you'll still have to use the WebKit prefix even on Chrome 25. Uh, 4.0 and up for Safari using the WebKit prefix, Opera 11.1 and up using the O prefix, and the same thing for 3.2 with the WebKit for iOS and 2.1. So I would take this as another progressive enhancement sort of thing. You can add a gradient and it might look nicer for your clients or your people on your site with a newer browser, and it will still look fine uh, for people without it. It's just not going to have a gradient. So let's get into CSS gradients. And one thing that's interesting about CSS gradients is the is that it might not be exactly how you expect it to be declared. Let's go to our wrapper and we're going to add this as a gradient going from white to gray on our background that's white. So we're going to leave this background in here. And in fact, we'll just have this be uh, background hyphen color white. This way, if the browser does not support CSS gradients, it's not. It's just going to get a white background. We don't have to worry about it. It's going to fall back to that. So let's start this off. We're going to do background and then a hyphen image. So you might wonder why it's image. It's just, uh, I don't know the, the specifics. It's just background hyphen image. And now we're going to do things a little bit differently than we've seen before. And we're going to start off with WebKit, just so you can see how it looks. And we're going to replace the uh, vendor prefix with other vendor prefixes for our other browsers. So WebKit hyphen linear hyphen gradient. And then we're going to do parentheses. And inside of our parentheses, we're going to say top, because this is it's going to start at the top and go to the bottom. So it's always going to start top left, go to bottom right. So just this is a straight vertical gradient. If we wanted this to be um, right to left or left to right, we could do something different. We'll show you in a second. However, we're going to say top. And we're going to now do a comma and the color that we want at the top. So that's going to be white, comma. And now we're going to want the color that we gradient to. We're going to have this be a dark gray, 333. And now I'm going to save this. Because I'm using a newer version of Chrome, uh, this particular line is supported from versions Chrome 10 and up. I don't have to worry about anything else. And we'll save this just so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll fill out the rest of our vendor prefixes. Let's go back to Chrome here and refresh. You can now see over the course of our div, it is gradienting down to uh, 333. Cool. Well, what if you wanted it to be horizontal, if you didn't want it to be uh, vertical? Well, we could say left, save, and now let's come to refresh. And now the white is starting at the left and it's going to the right. You can do this a little bit more explicitly, uh, but for right now, we're just going to do this. In fact, I'm going to do another lesson on gradients where we go over a little bit more advanced applications of gradients because there's all sorts of interesting things you can do with them. However, that's out of the scope of one video. So now that we have our gradient going here, let's actually take it back to top and bottom, uh, top, not Tom. And now we're going to add the rest of our vendor prefixes. Okay, I've grabbed this code here from a site called css3please.com. This is what the site looks like. Um, it gives you the vendor prefixes in the code here, so you can actually come in here and type out um, FFF to uh, whatever we want. We had 333. And you can see it, the preview up in the top right. This has all sorts of vendor prefixes and all sorts of CSS properties. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Also, if you get into SAS and Compass, there's ways of doing that in SAS and Compass that are also much quicker than having all of these vendor prefixes right here. I would always recommend supporting as many browsers as you can with this and degrade gracefully for the ones that don't support it. So let's save this. And as you'll see, going back to our CSS, we'll refresh it. It's still here. Uh, Chrome can go through and you'll notice on the left here and it will or on the right here, it's going to see all of the ones. It's going to check off the ones it doesn't support. And then the furthest one down that it does support, it's going to use. 
So this is how you use gradients in CSS. It's really nice and easy. There's nothing, nothing to it. It's just maybe a little bit different. I would recommend checking out css3please.com to grab this code to copy and paste in here. And we'll be using it on many of these other tutorials in the future. Um, I just wanted to make sure you understood a little about CSS3 before introducing the site itself. I'll make the link available in the description of the video below. Okay, so as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment on the video below. Hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts. We're going to be getting into some really cool CSS stuff. I'll show you how to do more interesting gradients than just a standard gradient. But for right now, uh, you have all sorts of tools that you need to get working with CSS3. You've got background gradients, text shadow, box shadow, border box, and uh, border radius. This is a lot of, that's a lot of stuff to get started with. Once again, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and thanks for watching.